Hello, hello. In this video, I want to talk about OpenAI's Whisper, which is an automated speech recognition system which has just been open source, meaning anyone can use the model and see the code. The model is multitask and multilingual. It can transcribe a whole host of languages as well as translate those languages to English. Pretty neat. If you want to learn more about it, I will link this blog post by OpenAI below where you can read more about it, see the code and read the actual paper. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Whisper using Google Colab. I do this as it means you can use my notebook. There's a link to this in the description bar below and run the code yourself without needing to install things like Python or additional packages or having hefty hardware. By the end of the video, you'll see how to use Whisper in Python and we'll try out a few examples such as English to English transcriptions and a French to English translation. So let's crack on. So here is the notebook that I've created on OpenAI Whisper and I've opened it in Google Colab. As I've said, you can have access to this notebook. The link to it is in the description bar below. It's basically this URL. So section one, notebook setup. The first thing we need to do is pull and install the latest commit of OpenAI's Whisper repository on GitHub. That's this repository here. I've just been reading a few things. So everything's here. If you wanted to go look at the code, it's all freely accessible, which is great. But um, essentially, yes, I'm just pulling this, installing with this line of code here. So I'm just going to run that. Right, that's all done. I'll just remove this bit because I don't know, it looks nicer. And the next thing we want to do is to make sure that Colab's hardware accelerator is set to GPU. The way we do this is we go to where it says RAM disk. Yours might say connect. Make sure you click that first and then you can go down here, view resources, and I've already got it set to GPU. However, if you didn't, it wouldn't show this little GPU RAM square here and you would select change run type and here the drop down you would select GPU. Right, section two, high level model access. So first things first, let's do an example of where we take an English audio file and transcribe it to English text. One neat thing about Colab is they've created this widget for uploading files and we're gonna use that to upload the audio. So if we run this, We'll get a widget here and we can choose files and I'm going to choose, I have read out two quotes from the book Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine because I love that book, it's amazing and I'm just going to load those two audio files. I recorded them on my phone using, what's it, what's it called, voice memos and then I just sent them to my um, MacBook Pro here via AirDrop and yeah. Just uploaded them like that. So in the short audio, I read this quote. I have often noticed that people who routinely wear sportswear are the least likely sort to participate in athletic activity. And that's how the audio basically sounds. And then for the long piece of audio from that book, I've gone with uh, this one. No, thank you. I said, I don't want to accept a drink from you because then I would be obliged to purchase one for you in return. And I'm afraid I'm simply not interested in spending two drinks worth of time with you. She is brutal and it's hilarious. Um, so yeah, they're the two audio files that I've chosen to test Whisper on. So they're uploaded here. Let's see how Whisper fares. So we're going to import Whisper. We're going to set the model to Whisper and we're going to load the base model, the base English model. If you wanted to, you could go to the Whisper repository and it will tell you about the different models. So here it's basically saying, um, I'm choosing, choosing base EN, so it's an English only model and it tells you how many parameters it's got, um, uh, speed, well, your relative speed for the different models. Um, yeah, so it's really interesting if you wanted to see that. I've gone for base EN, I'm gonna do the short, audio file first. Let's go. Okay, 
Here's the output. I have often noticed that people who routinely wear sportswear are the least likely sort to participate in athletic activity. I think that's bang on word for word. Let me just check. Yeah. Wow. That, okay. Right. Cool. Let's test it with something longer. So let's go for the long version. Right. No, thank you. I said, look, it, it's even got the comma in there. That's insane. So if you compare this to something like, you know, the transcription that's used on YouTube, say, it will generally translate, uh, transcribe quite well. However, well, sometimes. However, it wouldn't have this kind of punctuation. I haven't found anywhere. So this is, this is amazing. Anyway, no, thank you. I said, I don't want to accept a drink from you because then I would be obliged to purchase one for you in return. And I'm afraid I'm simply not interested in spending two drinks worth of time with you. <sighs> word for word, brutality. Amazing. Right, let's try something else. Let's do French audio to English transcription. So we're gonna take a French audio file first and I've selected a quote from Amelie and my sister who lives in France, has a French family, has kindly read out this quote for me and sent me the audio clip. So I'm gonna test it on her audio. And then let's test the model on the original quote, which is from the film and has quite a bit of background noise because um, I think it's in a, it's a, like a market shop scene. So anyway, let's let's do that. First things first, let's upload those files. So Amelie original and Amelie quote. And before we get started, let me show you what the quote actually says in French and English. So here it is. I'm not going to read the French part. <laughs> I'll embarrass myself. However, you can see the bit in English here as it translates. Having French nephews and a sister that speaks French, I know a bit of French, so I can see that it's not a literal translation like risk. We don't have risk here. However, this is what you would translate it into if it was into English and not word for word, you know, something that's that makes sense in English. So at least you'll never be a vegetable. Even artichokes have hearts. Let's see how this fares. Okay, I'm gonna go for the original one to begin with. So we've selected Amelie original. Here we go. Oh, and just to note while it's loading, I've chosen the base model. So it's not base EN like we had up here because now it's not an English audio to English transcription. It's the multilingual um, multitasking version of the model and it's already done. Okay, it's not quite done some bits. So the word like risk is not there. Nonetheless, I think we've got artichoke, we've got heart, we've got vegetable, d'être, to be. I think it's pretty much there. Let's just see how it translates into English. <laughs> what the hell? Okay, that's hilarious. You absolutely are a philosopher lover. Okay, that did not work well. Not to worry, we are using the base model. So let's try a slightly more accurate model and see what happens with that. Obviously, what you gain in accuracy, you lose in speed, but we'll go do real time and see what happens. So here I've chosen the small uh, model and everything else is the same. Let's go with that. Here we go. At least you don't risk being a vegetable because even an artichoke has a heart. That's pretty bang on. And I would say, so it's used the word risk, whereas in the translation that I just got off Google, it didn't have risk. What did it say again? At least you'll never be a vegetable. But that's that's someone's interpretation. I don't know who's written that on Google. Um, I'm happy with how the model's written it as well. And I think that's pretty spot on and quite genius. And that's just from changing from the base model to the small model, which as it says, is still pretty small. You have a lot of other choice to go at medium and large. So the improvement is insane and a brilliant translation, I would say for an audio file that has a lot of background noise. In fact, let me just, I'm gonna find it and show it you. Vous, au moins, vous risquez pas d'être un légume puisque même un artichaut a du cœur. <laughs> 
Okay, I think it's time to see how this fares with the quote that my sister read out. So let's change it to quote. Here we go. Okay, so in this one where my sister's read it, I think it's actually got word for word what she has said, i.e. what's from the quote. Let's just go back to the quote. Yeah, it's got it a lot better. Okay, so let's see how this one translates to English. So the transcription to French, brilliant. Now let's test the translation. So here we need to change it to quote. And this one's on the base model, which didn't perform that well last time. <laughs> let's see how it performs this time. Okay, you at least don't risk being a legume. <laughs> <laughs> because you are even an artist of the heart. Okay, I would say a lot better. Still not, still losing it a bit here, but much better than before. I feel like last time, was it referencing a different audio file? It was having a moment. The rest of the notebook just shows some low level model access. So essentially doing the same thing as we've done before with some slight tweaks and having a bit more choice on the decoding options so here we're choosing the model we're choosing a small model the audio is amelie original this is uh, slightly different from last time we're going to pad or trim the audio so what the model does is it looks at 30 second intervals of your audio file if your audio was less than 30 seconds it will add you know it will pad it so that it's 30 seconds long it's then converting the audio to a, a log mail spectrogram. So a spectrogram is a way to represent audio. And I think it's time on the x-axis, frequency on the y-axis, and then the color of the spectrogram indicates amplitude. Now the frequency on the y-axis would usually, you would think, be in hertz. However, it's in mels and it's something, <laughs> don't quote me on this, something to do with that's how we would naturally hear frequency. So it makes more sense. So yeah, it's changing it, changing the audio to something, a different representation of the audio, which I think is pretty neat and something you can really play about with because this Whisper is actually an off the shelf transformer model. Nothing's really changed within the architecture. What they've actually done is really worked with the data, um, which I find super interesting and shows what you can do with not just building these amazing architectures but looking differently at what goes into them um there's also some other bits that they've changed um to do with the the tokens but anyway that's by the by i will not explain that as well as some other people um but yeah that's a bit of insight there so we have the mel audio and here we've got a bit of a section where we detect the language. So let me just run this bit first. So one of the things uh, Whisper can do is detect the language in the audio. And that is what's being done here. Basically, it has a list of languages and it will say what the probability of it being that language is. If I just return to the repository here, it, these are all the languages that it has been trained on. And it's basically sh showing the word error rate. So Spanish, it performs best than Italian, English, but essentially it's showing you all the different languages. And what it'll do is it will, when it's trying to decide what language it is, it might say, oh, Spanish, not 0.3%. Italian, oh, maybe 1%. Ooh, French, 80%. And so it lists it all. And basically what you do is you take the maximum probability. So what is it most likely to be language wise? And that's what I'm essentially doing here. So let's run that and let's see what the language it detects and the probability. Oh, that was fast. So French with a 97% probability, which yeah, it's Amelie, it is French. So it's doing pretty well. And then here's what we've done before. We've translated from French to English. And let's see how, how it performs. At least you don't risk being a vegetable because even a butterfly has a heart. So not as good. And I'm guessing this is down to the padding or trimming potentially. That could have changed its performance with this word, which obviously should be artichoke. But anyway, that's something for me to look into because I always think you can learn a lot about where a model goes wrong, not just where it goes right. But anyway, that is a whistle stop tour of OpenAI's 
whisper. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope, well, <laughs> if you're watching it, hopefully you do enjoy the, these kind of videos. I hope it made sense to you, was concise, informative. And if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and head over to my Instagram account, which I've linked below. It's where I post a lot of data science content and soft skills content and just general interesting life things of me geeking out and living. Anyway, yeah. Thanks for listening.